When was the last time you went on a trip somewhere? How was it? You might be thinking of that time when you stayed up all night, speaking for hours at the local hostel with a stranger you had just met. Or perhaps you're thinking about that time you backpacked through the city and lost your wallet, scrambling to find it. Or maybe all you can remember is that time you got food poisoning and had to end up staying in for most of that trip. Whatever memory comes to mind, ask yourself, how valid is your remaining impression of that experience? Memories are not perfect, as evident from other biases we've talked about such as the misinformation effect and cryptonesia. We often think of our memories as an episodic reel of events, yet in truth, our memory is more like a collection of momentary snapshots scattered across the mind. Our experiences are sorted by the moments that stick out to us the most, whether pleasant or painful. And this is what we call the peak end rule. The peak end rule refers to this very mental process of putting great weight on the high intensive moments as well as the final moments of a given experience. It is these distinctive moments that average out into a collage of memories that is then used to define our interpretation of the past. So when we think about the last trip we went, whether we deem it as a positive or negative experience is largely based on the aforementioned peak and end moments. Everything else in between sort of fizzles out into the cracks of our minds. This theory was first introduced by the highly popular Israeli-American psychologist Daniel Kemen, who we've mentioned several times in other videos. He defines a bias as, The peak end rule is a psychological heuristic in which people judge an experience largely based on how they felt at its peak and at its end, rather than based on the total sum or average of every moment of the experience. Kamen and others introduced this concept in 1993 in a study titled When More Pain is Preferred to Less, Adding a Better End. In the study, the researchers had participants go through two different versions of an unpleasant experience. The first version of the experience involved participants submerging their hand in 14 degrees Celsius water for 60 seconds. The second version got them to do the same, except once the time was over, they were subjected to keep the hand submerged for another 30 seconds as they raised the temperature to 15 degrees Celsius. Afterward, the participants were asked which version of the experience they were willing to repeat and remember. Surprisingly, the majority of them chose the second version of the experience. As noted by Kamen and others in their paper, subjects chose the long trial simply because they liked the memory of it better than the alternative, or at least disliked it less. These results were quite interesting to note as they went against the very logical principles of what's called temporal monotonicity, which refers to the idea that adding moments of pain to an end of an episode makes the experience worse, while adding moments of pleasure make it better. Despite having to expose their hands to uncomfortable temperatures for 30 seconds longer, the participants still chose to go with the second version of the trial. So, what causes the peak end rule? There are two distinct cognitive biases that influence this. The first one is the representative heuristic. This is a mental shortcut to make quick judgments in times of certain certainty. It is our brain's way of computing a given scenario or thing. To help our brains make a decision quickly, it assesses an object and organizes it into a familiar general category. Kamen and fellow researcher and psychologist Dr. Barbara Fredrickson note that the value of memory snapshots is what dominates the value of the experience. The emotional intensity we felt of a given experience is more influential to whether we remember it, rather than the duration of it. Secondly, people also tend to remember things at the beginning or end of an event, due to the serial position effect. Made up of the primacy and recency effect, the latter causes us to recall things that are more recent. As such, when it comes to our memories, the peak end rule places heavy emphasis on the end of an experience. With the American writers and academics, Chip and Dan Heath refer to the peak end rule in their book, The Power of Moments. They write, when people assess an experience, they tend to forget or ignore its length. What's undisputable is that when we assess our experiences, we don't average our minute by minute sensations. We need to remember that not all memories and experiences are defined by the high intensive moments and end alone. Remembering events in this way alone is not accurate to the actual experience and may in fact make some experiences feel more positive or negative than they actually were. For this reason, it's important to look back at our memories and try to see the experiences we had as what they were in their entirety. Reflecting on the events that occurred in a bigger picture may help to change our perspective on the memory itself, allowing us to see that things weren't all that bad as we may have thought or perhaps not as purely pleasant as imagined. As mentioned in the video, the recency effect plays a large part in the peak end rule. 
to get a better understanding of how the beginning and end influences what we remember, watch the video on the left to learn more about the serial position effect. And to learn more about cognitive biases in general, watch the playlist on the right. Subscribe for more content like this.